Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. It's that time again, restriction time, but for villains. Now in general villains have less restrictions cause they're willing to go to levels other characters aren't. But that doesn't mean they don't have hurdles, struggles to overcome. I'm Sasha and these are the Top 10 Super Villains with Weird Power Restrictions Part 2. And no, they're not all from the Silver Age. Now like all our lists, some of these restrictions will have since been gone, but since they existed we get to talk about them. Them's the breaks. The Ten-Eyed Man. This character debuted in Batman number 226 back in 1970. In his first origin, Philip Reardon was injured in Nam when fragments of a grenade hit his eye. He returned to Gotham and got a job as a security guard. And one night while trying to stop a robbery, he mistakes Batman for one of the thieves and is injured, losing all his sight. But fear not, a brilliant doctor, Dr. Engstrom, reattaches his optic nerves to his ten fingers, so he can see from his ten fingers. His fingers are now eyes. He has 360 periscopic vision, but while they're eyes so they're super sensitive. Get dirt on them, cover them with a blanket, he grabs anything too hard with them, touching things is now a problem. Yeah, he's a great marksman now, but you have to do all these convoluted hand movements, go ahead and insert jokes about mine, but you really have to contort to get things to work. He just has to be really careful. Is it a blessing or a curse? He really should have done the scientific talk show circuit. He would have made money and avoided Batman and made him feel bad for ruining another person's life. The best revenge is living well. Number nine, Calendar Man. He's low cause well, he didn't have powers at first. He first debuted in Detective Comics number 259 back in 1958, and over time has transitioned from a gimmicky villain to one who, while still gimmicky, is more credible, and has taken part in some well received stories. On top of really needing to plan his heists and other plans around holiday events, he also now ages with the seasons and is reborn each spring. So if he is in his winter phase, yeah, you can take him. Unless he planned ahead, which he's good at. A great planner, Calendar Man. Still, having to plan according to hyper aging would be a nuisance. You can't control everything, and if something important and happens when you're down for the count, you're just gonna miss out. SOL. Number 8, Humpty Dumpty. He first debuted in Arkham Asylum Living Hell number 2 back in 2003, and actually isn't malicious, but that is part of what makes him have a restriction. He was actually key on repairing things, but he breaks anything he reassembles, mostly because the things he's reassembling aren't broken, and this has actually led to many deaths. What he is good at though is fixing things for his fellow Arkham inmates, which also fuels their psychoses, so he's helping in all the wrong ways. If only he understood what he was trying to do, he could use his desire to repair for good and maybe open a watch repair shop or clock shop or something modern that people actually need repaired, a computer repair shop. Being able to disassemble and reassemble is a good skill, but you have to be able to do it correctly. Number 7, Snowflame. So he's a super villain who debuted in New Guardians number 2 back in 1988, and he gets his powers from cocaine. Yup, you heard that right. He fought against a group of heroes in Colombia because topical, also stereotypical. He has a power called the cocaine touch. He is so infused with cocaine, touch him and get high. Here's the thing, he's also an addict. So the thing that grants him his powers is killing him slowly. So often that is the way. He also gains superhuman speed and strength and pain tolerance while on cocaine. But he's also pyrokinetic, but I like to think he was that way before. He died quite quickly in the same issue he appeared in, in fact. In a big explosion. And if he hadn't, yeah, he wouldn't have been around for long. Somebody somewhere would have made a case for this glorifying drug use or being offensive to the people of Colombia. As it stands, Snowflame is a blip, mocked fondly by those who remember him. Aren't you glad you now know about Snowflame? Number 6, The Infidel. My plan to get more and more Astro City into these videos is slowly coming to fruition. We're in the end game now. So the Infidel is the arch nemesis of the Samaritan, and their existences are intertwined. The Infidel was an African slave who became an immortal sorcerer, and used his powers to eventually seize control and rule a wasteland future in the 36th century, ruling over a world that would eventually end. He was so powerful he would often take these little zen trips out of the timeline to be alone and ponder. During one of these meanderings, he lost lost everything. The Samaritan, who was just an average person from the dystopian 35th century, was selected to stop the world from ending. And his time travel trip back in time, he was imbued with powers, and he succeeded, hence erasing the infidel's version of paradise, his future. But not him, since he was outside the time stream. When he realized what happened, he tried to create a world without the Samaritan. However, they are completely evenly matched. Neither can win. They have fought each other to the destruction of reality multiple times, but they can just never win. So now the infidel lives outside of the main timeline, and him and the Samaritan have dinner once a year to see where the other's head is at, and if he's getting more good, or if the Samaritan is getting more evil, because that's the only way anything is going to happen. His restriction? He's terrible at changing the Samaritan's mind, like serving him dinner prepared by his slave girl harem. 
at least pretend to be good, play the game a little. I like that they're just chill frenemies now. It's very Venture Bros feeling, like, cool, okay, we tried, come on over, I made tacos. Speaking of the Venture Bros, in at number five, Phantom Limb. So the Venture Bros is a series that parodies many things, but largely the superhero genre and action genres of the Silver Age, things like Johnny Quest. There are many villains in the series that I adore, but my favorite is Phantom Limb, Dr. Hamilton G. Phantomos, former boyfriend of Dr. Mrs. the Monarch, and full-time melodramatic villain. He is the most competent villain in the series and the most pretentious, but his power set, let's get to it. Initially, he had small deformed limbs and was hence an outcast from his family. An experiment to fix them did render them normal sized, but also invisible and able to kill with a touch. He always has to hide them now and wears gloves, though he's most often in his phantom inspired purple costume. It's hard to keep your rep up as a normal person while you have to hide that your limbs are invisible. Thankfully, for the most part, he doesn't care, and he's now a member of the Council of 13. He's chilled out a lot. I miss his romance with that shoe though. Yeah, that's right, an actual shoe. Phantom Limb's great. I'll be his girlfriend. After Lex. Yeah, I'm weird. I don't apologize for it. Number four, the Enchantress. Marvels, so just Enchantress. She has quite the power set, but used to have a very Wonder Woman-y weakness. She first appeared in Journey into Mystery number 103 back in 1964. And no, her weakness isn't that she's in love with Thor, or that she initially got her powers from Loki. For a little bit, it's complicated. On top of the usual Asgardian perks of strength, speed, and stamina, etc., she also has the ability to manipulate ambient magical energy, which she can then project or shoot. She can also perform complex spells, cast illusions, levitate, disrupt time, use mind control. She also of course performs enchantments, some on herself, such as to increase her beauty to make her literally bewitching so that people are enchanted. Also she has cast a spell on her lips so that any man she kisses is her slave for a week. They don't use that much anymore. However, way back in the day, she had a restriction. She couldn't access her powers if her hands were bound and she was gagged. So you get to have your standard bondage panels. This isn't a thing so much anymore, but I bet some people miss it. Number three. Three, Black Adam. He first debuted in Fawcett Comics back in 1945, because he was under the Marvel family umbrella, and would be absorbed by DC with all the rest of the Fawcett characters after Fawcett Comics went bankrupt after years of litigation with DC over Superman plagiarism and copyright issues. Black Adam is one of the main antagonists for Captain Marvel, now known as Shazam. He is Tech Adam, an Egyptian granted powers by the wizard Shazam. However, he abuses them and is banished. This is the classic origin, people. He stays in his magical form all the time, which for a time gave him the restriction that he could never change back, that his physical form had aged, and if he changed, he would turn to dust. Which has happened and been depicted, and it's horrifying. subsequent changes in how people view that logic that has allowed him to change back. The question is, is he actually aging while he is powered? For some, the answer is no, and they think his mortal body is in a sort of stasis. He later gained the power of Isis that has actually rendered him more powerful than Billy, but again, wibbly wobbly timey wimey. So many retcons and rebirth. Keeping up with comics can be a lot, there's a lot of a lot. So much to explore, so be sure to check it out for yourself. Number 2, Trigon. He debuted in the New Teen Titans number 2 back in 1981. Trigon is the father of Raven, and initially could not come conquer the Earth except for through Raven, who is constantly battling against him and his influences. Nowadays, this is less of a thing, but Raven being a conduit was a huge part of her first run on the New Teen Titans, and continues to be every time they adapt these stories. Trigon is so powerful that he really could destroy the Earth on a whim, so he needs this restriction. We need him to have this restriction. Do you think we'll ever get to see a full-blown monstrous Trigon on Titans? One of my favorite Trigons is Nice Guy Dad Trigon from Teen Titans Go. He's a fun swear lord. He first debuted in Justice League number one back in 1987, and yes he has powers. He did more than kill Ted Kord and get his neck snapped by Wonder Woman. She twisted it all the way around, front to back. But it's Rebirth, so he's fine now. Lord started out normal, but gained powers after the Dominators invaded Earth, telepathic ones that allowed him to influence others' minds by making subconscious suggestions to them. However, if he uses them, he elevens all over the place. It's all anime boy seeing a hot girl for the first time. Translation, his nose bleeds. So it hurts him, but right before his death at the hands of Wonder Woman, he had gotten and so good at controlling his powers, he could even control Superman. See? Practice makes perfect. In Rebirth, he has always been a metahuman and can push people to follow their subconscious desires. However, now the drawback is he can't control what those desires are. So he's not as much of a threat. I've always liked Maxwell Lord as a character. That has nothing to do with anything, just Bond. What character that doesn't get a lot of airtime do you like? Yes, I know he was on Supergirl, but 
wasn't the same. So those were 10 more villains with weird power restrictions. I've got to put some rare people on here. I'm pleased. Let me know who we missed and please drop a like and a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I'm Sasha and we'll see you again soon here on Top 10 Nerd. Bye bye.